a fantastic live stream as soon as Jan is able to join us. He is just making sure he has gone live. Uh, so I'm Brian from my Tesla weekend, the Model 3 refresh. The Highland, if you will, and some of you I know will not, is here. It is real. It is time. And uh, you can go to uh, some showrooms and actually see it. You can place your order today. But the good news is we've got friends in Europe who already have <laughs> access to it, who are able to purchase it. And Jan from Tesla Fix has done precisely that. Jan, welcome and uh, thank you for joining me on this amazing simulcast between yes. our two fantastic channels. And I also want to uh, say hello to my audience as well on my channel, the three that are watching right now, probably. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm glad that uh, Brian also does a collab stream here so more people can see this because of course, like Brian already said, I own a Tesla Model 3 and yes, the Model 3 Highland is real despite many people from the, com or some people from the community thinking it's, it's not real, but uh, yeah, it is. And today I'm gonna to show you around the car a little bit. You can ask me anything. Brian will moderate this as well and will hit me up with the questions because I'm of course via phone from inside of the car at a charging station right now. So charging the car up. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna to do today. And I'm pretty stoked for this episode. So let's start this Tesla Fix My Tesla Weekend special. And let's I'm bringing go. in my bringing in my microphone a little closer because I'm getting complaints that I'm too quiet. So uh, okay. I will, uh, there's a lot to cover in this car. <clears throat> it's all oh, been yeah. covered before, but uh, not as fresh as, uh, as this. And I would point out that whatever you call it doesn't really matter. It's still the refresh model three. We know yeah. it was the code name for the project, just like wham was the code name for Deadpool. Does that mean Deadpool never came out? No, it's just like Longhorn, the Microsoft Longhorn. Don't you know, that's not real. It is, it was Vista and uh, we can discuss whether or not that was a good thing. Doesn't matter, <laughs> but uh, why don't we kick it over to you and uh, see sure. uh, how it how it goes. So I'm sitting here in the Model 3 Refresh. I've shot today actually a review of this car, which will be aired tomorrow if I'm lucky, or maybe on Thursday, uh, Tuesday, maybe let's say uh, that way uh, that's more uh, better because I have a lot to cover here, a lot of ground to cover here inside of the car. And maybe I'm gonna give you a small tour of the car and if anyone has questions, Brian will still watch the chat and you can ask me anything about this car because of course, is the cyber uh, is the Tesla, sorry, the Tesla Model 3 here different than the American one? I would argue, no, actually, it's the same car. And I'm gonna show you uh, why in a second. Okay, let's just turn around the camera for one second here. So you won't see my weird uh, face from down below and I'm gonna do it in a wide angle view. I'm gonna remove my face light here for one second. Now you can already see the dashboard. Oh, the great, great dashboard here. You can see here's a POV of, of, the, of the steering wheel, as you can see here. I hope my audio is pr uh, pr still pretty good. And you can also see a little bit the light bar, but I think it's a little bit too dark. That's why I'm gonna illuminate it a little bit uh, more. That's why I go here into the settings. I should have uh, uh, did the settings in uh, English. Of course, it's in German, so mind the settings here. So the light bar actually still doesn't really light up why is it is it in park mode what's happening no okay you can always or, put your foot on the brake yeah i, I did it and it didn't uh, oh. do anything so okay that's the effect when you try to so show something but uh, okay let's let's still go through it so the accent lighting is on. Now I'm going to leave it like this maybe and then you can see it better. So you see the light bar here. And one thing that I found very disappointing when looking into the car in the reviews was this angle right here. If you look this angle right here, you can see that the light bar actually makes like a step. And I was, I thought, oh, why did they do that? Why the heck did they do that? That's so unnecessary and I'm gonna get out of the car now that you see it better and I thought ah oh, it doesn't look good but the thing is when you're inside of the car actually it doesn't look too bad it's perfectly it's, it's actually pretty perfect when you have the light bar this way because it gives it a very unique
Your audio has cut out. I cannot hear you at all. It's rage comparison, though. There you go. But... Uh-oh. Audio is still cutting out. Video looks good, though. Hmm. Well, uh, he's saying it looks cool. <laughs> uh, Jan, we cannot hear you at all. He's going through the different colors there. <laughs> we still cannot hear you. We still cannot hear you. Uh, but uh, the hand gestures are helpful. Um, yeah, your, your audio has cut out completely. I don't know if you can hear me, but, uh, but there is no sound. Uh, -huh. uh I think I'm going to do this for a second so that I can tell you, Jan, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Uh, whatever you're doing, you are, you are silent. There is no audio coming from you. I don't know what to say. Uh, I think the tour is still going. Uh huh. Jan? <laughs> so this is, uh, yes, as David points out, the, the joys of live TV. <laughs> we have some fun. Uh, we need to, yeah, there's, those are the blinker stocks, uh, the stockless blinkers uh, for indicating uh, your turning desires. Uh, Jan, I don't know if you can hear me, man, but we can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. I cannot hear you. What? Hello? Jan, come on, man. Come on back to me. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. No sound. Can't hear you. Maybe. I don't know. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. No sound. So he's going to work on that for a second. Uh, in the comments, a couple things. Tell us what you want him to cover. What sort of things uh, are you looking to see in the car? And... Uh, what uh, sort of stuff uh, matters? One thing we know we can do, <laughs> one thing we know uh, that, that it has is uh, the uh, dual pane glass, the, I guess that would be uh, laminated glass all the way around, which makes the ride quieter. And it does that by converting uh, uh, kinetic energy into uh, thermal energy. Uh, it's a pretty clever system. Uh, he's trying something different now. And I still can't hear you. Still can't hear you. Is there a mute button on StreamYard you maybe accidentally <laughs> bonked? He'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> and uh, Mark, of course, saying <laughs> live is fun. So I imagine on a rebroadcast, we will uh, cut out all these parts. But in the meantime, uh, <laughs> Simon, of course, uh, is telling us that uh, he has uh, kidnapped him. Uh, oh, oh, you were with him. That's right. That's right. That makes more sense than than my theory. Uh, we'll get him back in a second here. Uh, added spice and excitement. Indeed. This is a lot of fun. Uh, a little weird. A little weird, but hey, man. Bluetooth probably. Ah, that might be it. The Bluetooth probably connected to the Tesla. Oh, that would be unfortunate. Can we see downside? Oh, yeah. You want to see the pedals? We can take a look at the pedals when they come in. Oh, he is back. Add to stage. There we are. Are you there now? Yeah. And like okay. the comments already told, yes, it's connected with the Tesla. That's the problem. Because it was when so you I'd... got back in the car. Yes, exactly. So, so let's. So please give us the the stock talk and the blinker talk and all that again. And because you didn't hear. Okay, sadly. Okay, okay. Sorry and for the that stage inconvenience. Shall be yours, my friend. Okay. So back to the stocks. So um, the most significant change was the stock placement that, that it's gone and now we have the, those touch buttons. And many people were complaining about, oh, no, how can you turn the wheel? But Brian, of course, in the US, you don't have many roundabouts, right? 
uh, increasingly more all the time, but uh, that's kind but, of my issue, but, uh, but okay. not perhaps as many as Europe. Okay, so in Europe, we have many of those, and uh, that's why when you turn the wheel a few times, then it's difficult to figure out uh, which one to press. And we also, here it is by law that you have to blink out of the roundabout, of course, and that's very important. So uh, I got used to it very fast in the first half an hour, but some people get used to it uh, like differently. I, I mean, I, I get the point. It's such a muscle memory to just flick the... Flick the um, the stock here and then it um it blinks or, or shows you where to or the other one where to go but um i think that's a non-issue and i think also when steer by wire is adapted to all the cars that tesla makes then it makes totally sense to do, do that and i think that was one of tesla's radical approach to go yeah with the just without the stocks and just cleaning up the car itself and the front um does anyone have any different questions about the steering wheel right now that I can elaborate here because we have, of course, different buttons. For example, here are the high beams, for example, to touch. I'm going to touch them so you can see gonna, where I am right now. And uh, over here, you have a button for the cameras. And if I press that, you can see here the live view of the cameras on the side. Um, that's also pretty convenient because I use that very often, actually, to press it, especially when I park. I'm going to press that and uh, then the cameras. It's uh, pretty nice up. having the camera button there. I was not aware of that. And yeah. having the high beam button, I think, is also nice because yeah. uh, because with beta, you are unable to uh, disable automatic high beams. And sometimes they turn on at moments yeah. that I consider deeply inappropriate for the yes. traffic. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's true. And, and the same thing here with the wipers. If I press that, the wipers start, of course, here. And uh, one interesting thing was, at first, I was like, uh, where do I select the wipers? Because, of course, the, the rain detection that's inside of this thing as well is not so good, let's say it bluntly. The Germans are, or the German car manufacturers are superb in the rain sensors and stuff like this. So they really work. But in the Tesla, I would say it's a little bit like, uh, yeah, not, not convenient. But if I, that's the interesting thing. Now, when you drive and you press this button, then automatically here's the selector of the windshield wiper and now you can select it there or what you can also do is if you press it and then select it with the knob here on the steering wheel there you can select the wiper and i got used to that pretty fast because at first i didn't even uh, put a macro macro for the wipers down below here but now it's not necessary because i got the point ah okay if i press the high beams then i can also adjust the lights in the same fashion here i can like can you see it, me? Yeah. Like now you can, uh, like if I press it long, it stays in that position. But so Faye yeah, would like, like to know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, is there an easy way to access the manual on the screen in order to ask questions regarding the vehicle? Uh, yes, you could just press on the car here and then you go to, um, let me see. Uh, I think you can just it? use the search from the top. Ah, yeah. Over there, I could use the search. Yes, that's true. And also go over here somewhere. Where was it? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, or the easiest one, the, the, the main one that I would use is you go into the entertainment section. And then here you have Tesla tutorials. And then you just press that. And then you have all the things. And the manual, of course, is not here. But um, that's one way to learn about the car. <laughs> And I already watched the videos and here is the selector of the, here's just a, here you can um, just have all the settings, for example, the seats and everything. Um, One thing that I've yeah. uh, had success mm -hmm. with is uh, I've seen people say, well, there's too many uh, little, little uh, things that I want it to do that are mm -hmm. going to be uh, hidden in too many menus. And mm -hmm. I say, you just hit the voice activation and I can say, play yeah this band this song on spotify and mm -hmm. it works unless the song is not on spotify and then it plays something close um are there any favorite voice commands uh that you've experienced that you'd like to share um no because i haven't used the voice feature as much because i my settings were in german and the voice features in german are not as good i would say that's why i have to switch it right now i'm going to do that as well now in the menu because it's horrible actually uh, United States, oh no, region format, okay, yeah, 
And then I have it in English now and also the screen I want to change. Yeah, so touch screen English. So, all right. Now it's going to restart and then I'm going to reconnect with the car again. Um, with the audio. You're afraid to get out, aren't you? Because it's going to yeah. reconnect to the car. That's uh, true. Can you roll your window down partly and show us the, uh, the laminated glass? Oh, yeah. I can show you that. And that's super and interesting because we have, of course, 30% noise reduction while driving because of the laminated windshield. If you can see that, I'm going to show the, with the lights. You can see it way better, I think. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's in the rear seats as well? Yeah, everywhere. 360 degrees, every window in the car, even the top and everywhere. 360 degree is laminated all around the car here. And um, this is the seat of a kid here. And also the glass is um, laminated. And that's a feature actually that was super interesting because that one was really noticeable because I've tested the Model 3 in Amsterdam a few weeks ago. And now I've tested, of course, my Model 3 Island. I should. Uh, and yeah, the interesting thing is that you it's so noticeable. The noise reduction is, I, I would say, the biggest thing that you can notice right off the bat while driving from the driving experience itself. I mean, of course, the styling is totally different as well. You can really tell, um, but the audio uh, dampening, the sound dampening is superb. And I've never driven a quite quieter vehicle than this one actually before. Even the German cars aren't as quiet, but of course they were a combustion engine because um, yeah, that, that's the thing that you need to know still, but yeah, it's, it's so super how, sound up. Yeah. So, so a question here, how long did it take to get used to the wheel buttons instead of stocks? 30 minutes. So I've driven a, yeah. I drove an X, a new X, uh, maybe six months ago, but then also, uh, for part of the road trip we just did. And the, for me, the blinkers were effortless to understand, mm -hmm. um, the top one is is that direction the bottom one is the other direction and it it was very intuitive for me on this particular road trip i didn't have to deal with any roundabouts so it wasn't an issue but my town also has a lot of roundabouts and america increasingly has roundabouts and i would agree that this shift was probably meant to coincide with uh steer by wire so your hands don't need to leave the wheel uh, That's true. And, and if they don't leave the wheel, then, you know, your thumb is always in the right place. Um, so I think that's helpful. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. one thing that um, I got a lot or, or what astonished me the most um, uh, from this car was actually the process, because I was called by a Tesla representative three days before Christmas or yeah, three or four days before Christmas. And he said that because I have a Cybertruck reservation, I get a 1,000 euro discount additionally to the um, EV tax credit that we have or, or the incentive that we have. It's not a tax credit. It works differently in Germany. But um, that one got scrapped at the 18th of December, actually. And that was the thing because it was scrapped and the he called me afterwards but tesla gave a huge rebate it, uh, they gave four thousand five hundred um, dollars uh, or euros rebate for compensating for this incentive and um yeah that's that's something that was pretty interesting to see and then i decided since also Euro europe is gonna um, raise the import taxes on china next year that's what they say i don't know if they follow through with that but that's why I ordered it now and I ordered it um, pretty fast. And then I decided, OK, when I hung up the call, I already ordered. I went into the online configurator, started configuring the car. And then it was so crazy, the experience. Over Christmas, they managed. Yes, uh, Brian, please tell me, when did I pick up this car? So you said the 22nd was your order, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 27th. Yeah, one week later. One yeah. week later, 28th, I think it was, one week later, I could pick it up in Stuttgart in Holzgerling. People said, oh, that means they have a lot of cars there. They, they, they have a demand problem. I'm not sure about that. I think they just had a shipment. That's why um, they had a bigger shipment there. And especially I've configured the car. I've configured the car with white interior. I took the standard range. So it's like, yeah, I took the standard range with the different wheels. So it's a 
poser long range, you could say, uh, because of course the wheels are gonna deduct the, the range, of course, as well. But I figured I have a Cybertruck reservation. I'm pretty bullish on Cybertruck coming to Europe, uh, maybe in the next one year or next two years. So that's why I've decided to, yeah, to do this and decided to go with the cheaper model because then I would save 10,000 for the Cybertruck more or less that I still gonna order when it's gonna be available in Europe. Now you've owned a variety of cars in your life. And yes. you've, I'm sure, rented cars. I'm sure you've been mm -hmm. in cars. Have you ever been in a car that had better factory sound system than the Model 3 <laughs> Reverse? No, not even the Model 3 itself, which already has a pretty good sound system. And I've tested that also in Amsterdam. And this was also the next thing that was super noticeable was that the um, sound system with the 17 speakers now, not, not 15 like in the, uh, for, uh, in the Model 3 from before. And you notice that because we have two subwoofers now, they're in the back and you can hear them. Um, it's a lot of, you can have a ba bass heavy, the highs are pretty good, um, very balanced and everything. And I pretty liked it. And one feature that uh, from the sound system that actually is like a hidden feature because it's actually not, at not has nothing to do with the sound system itself. I'm gonna turn off, uh, turn around the camera again to show you this. And that's wait a second. Oh God. Sorry for this uh, strange uh, handling here. Is this one here? Is the one of the speakers of the car as well, or the sound system here? You can see that. There you you hear some. The highs are going to go through that as well. And one thing here is here's a red LED inside that you don't see actually. When somebody is in the left in your blind spot, you can see this LED light up, but it's hidden. You can't see it now. And it's super bright and noticeable while you're driving. So you drive your car and you notice this, this red light. And most German OEMs, for example, make a, do, put that thing into the mirrors actually, but Tesla put it here secretly inside of here. And it, it's, it just works and it looks fabulous that it's hidden. And that's what I like about the car. It's super minimalistic, as you can see here. And um, going over maybe the dashboard, I think, is the next thing that's pretty important. If you can see Real here, quick it's... on that, before we yeah, get to that, okay. I would say oh, yeah, yeah, one, sure, advantage, sure. one advantage to putting the blind spot detection on the outside is that other cars can see when they're in your blind spot. Yeah, and I'm yeah, aware of true. that when I'm on the highway and I see other people's blind spot indicators light up that yeah, they may not that's be true. able to see me. That's true, but I, I think you can also <laughs> notice it here because it's a little bit higher. It's it's not the, it's not here, but it's in the middle. You, I, but you're right. I mean, in the mirror, it's way more noticeable than looking inside of the cabin of somebody. So yeah. So let's uh, let's cover the dashboard because <clears throat> Please, with yeah. all those million knobs and and all that, there's going to be a yeah. lot to discuss. Yep. So here's the dashboard, the new styling of the dashboard. That's a soft touch material. That's a woven fabric here over there. And I got to say the car itself, when you sit inside of the car, it has such a premium feel to it. Everything feels pretty good, pretty premium here. And um, the dash also did a, had a great upgrade. I also like the wooden styling that we have in the Model 3 from before. Um, I really like that as well. So no hate uh, over there, but this one is uh, way better, I would say, especially the build quality of the side doors, for example. That's what I'm gonna to show you absolutely is over here. I hope you still hear me good. Um, because over here, you can see this material is actually not plastic. That material is wrapped in leather. So it still is, even it has a soft cushion touch. Like when you touch it, it's not hard, it's soft. So this is leather over here until here and here. This is leather as well, or, or the fake leather that Tesla uses here. And in the inside here is still this uh, soft, um, yeah, those, I, I don't know how to call it, this, this, um, Alcantara. Yeah, this, this normal, yeah, the, the control, the, the, the normal um, fabric from also the floor mats, for example, is the same material here over there and yeah here can, you can also see one of the newer speakers as well and here's your button like i think that's similar to the model 3 i'm not sure um i i don't remember how how it was in the other model 3 but yeah it, it really feels pretty premium and yeah the overall build quality is superb i would say 
Um, that's that's something also many people noted that uh, friends of mine, engineering friends from Germany, said it kind of feels like a Mercedes or feels like a German car or a BMW. You can also compare it to that because the build quality inside of the car is super awesome. And also the panel gaps are not, there are none actually. I've, I've ran around the car. There are some slight misalignments that are in this, I, I would say, the in the norm. Um, for example, here as a German, I immediately noticed this kind of mis uh, small misalignment over there. If you can see it here, that's <laughs> maybe one millimeter off. I don't know if you can see that. It's really just one millimeter or something. I don't know what that is in your conversion of the US. Uh, yeah, it's very subtle, very slight. I mean, like, yeah. Very unacceptable. A coin. I can't A quarter coin, it. a half a quarter coin or something. <laughs> Yeah, the big thing with the change in materials that I would point out is that the mm -hmm. getting rid of the wood introduces a cost savings, but wood is also a very uh, organic material. Yeah, it's the it most is. organic material, and that can introduce squeaks and rattles. So this change in materials gives you more control over the finished product. It gives you a finer, uh, a finer detail on what the finish will be, not just mm -hmm. the day it's sold, but a year or 10 later. So you get quieter materials that are cheaper yep. to manufacture and easier to install. And it's, it, it, it introduces some savings in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, uh, there was a question, can you show the pedals? Yes, of course, I can show the pedals. Um, I already, look, you have the light of the feet there, but here are the pedals. I don't know if you can see them pretty good. I'm gonna, yep, ah, they look good. I have, to, I have to adjust the light a little bit, sorry for that. So maybe you hear some squeaking from my jacket, but here are the pedals. They are rubber material here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, not to my shoe, but here. Um, <laughs> yeah, and over there... I don't know if that's missing actually because that's just a plastic piece. And I think maybe the the panel, I'm not sure if it should look like this, but here you go. It doesn't have a a plastic um cushion on top of that. So maybe and because we're covering new yeah. ground, Andrew wants to know what well, show us the passenger well as well. Yeah, of course. Of course. Here's well, the passenger side. It doesn't have <laughs> anything there. Uh, gladly, because then my wife would just break all the time, and I don't want that. I just want to just, move faster and faster, of course. It looks great. It looks yeah. great. And uh -huh. one more thing that I want to show you, if that's fine, or maybe you have a question. Maybe somebody wants to, wants to jump in yeah. here, but one thing that I find very interesting is this. Wait a second. Over here. Um, that's of course the new style. I'm gonna do it like this, okay? Is this feature? If you can see right now, that is actually like uh, what kind of material is that? That's it has a structure to it, it has a slight structure to it, so it doesn't get fingerprints actually on top of that. So it's a matte finish and it's silvery or, or gray, it's a grayish uh, tone. And one interesting thing over here, wait a second is of course the opening up of this thing. It has super deep storage here. You can really store a lot of stuff and this has a metal finish. And one thing is that's a plastic metal finish. But now back to the trim over here, that's, it feel, it's cold and it feels like a real metal finish. So this one is a metal finish line, uh, the finish line or lined finish or how could you say? But um, yeah, this Machined. one is real. Machined, it feels like machined metal because it's cold. I don't know if it really is metal, but but if it's not, it's not noticeable that it's not metal. But this one is plastic, but also with the cool touch, I would say. So this one's good. And, and also, does it open th backwards as well? No, it just opens one way. No, of course, it opens backwards as well, slides down. No, no, I mean the other, here. the other, oh yeah, that, oh, that's your cup and That's the cup holders, it. of course. And it slides there too. Here's the placement where you place your Tesla key card, for example. That's just you slide it up. And that's something also that changed. So I'm going to switch over here. And that's this thing, this cabin, this lid. When you close it down, it's magnetic. Hear that? Oh. Boom. Very soft. Close. Nice. And I really like that. 
So you don't have to actually do something here to open it up. It just closes and opens. Everything feels pretty premium. And now we come to the big one, of course, the glove box. The famous glove box where people and um, especially reviewers complain, it's way too loud, my ears are bleeding. But let's see how loud it actually is. I'm going to cover that in my review, of course, that I'm going to plug Do here it with again. Do the voice command instead. Okay. Wait a second. Open. Why doesn't it? Uh, hello? Open glove box? No, it don't. Open glove box? No, it, it doesn't give me the voice commands because I think pen. I'm connected with the phone. Give us your Damn pen. it. All right, use the use the buttons like a like a caveman. Yeah, over here is the glove caveman. box, and now the glove box opens. Oh, how, my ears! Everybody in in the in the video, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for that, but listen to that. That's what they complain about. Oh, I mean that is louder than I expected, but. But these yeah. are strong magnets to keep the glove box closed. And that's what it make, why it makes sense. And it isn't as loud as people say. Um, I think it also, also comes through louder than it actually is. For me, it's, it's nothing. But <laughs> I'm hearing well. So <laughs> <coughs> sorry for the coughing. So guys, uh, what, uh, yep. what do we need to cover here? What are we missing? Um, yeah, we have a big one uh, that I already know that I want to cover because that's the seats, of course, because this one was a huge, huge, huge upgrade. And of course, that's these, sorry for reaching over. My voice is gonna go, yeah. Over here, you can see all the seats are now perforated, if you can see that. So, of course, you ask yourself or not ask yourself because you already seen some reviews about the car. How and why do we have uh, perforated seats? We have perforated seats because we want, of course, to have ventilated seats over here. That's why I can just adjust here in the menu the heating, for example, over here for this seat. Or you can cool your seat here. And that's the coolest feature for the summer. Um, you can cool your butt when you sit inside of here. And sometimes even I want to have warm hands. But since I moved and I get hot pretty fast, I'm going to turn on the, the cooling actually in winter. Actually, also, I did that a couple of times. And then your seat starts to cool, which is awesome. I'm going to turn off that again so you won't hear too much fan noise. But you can cool and uh, heat your seats. And of course, for the back, you can do that as well. And one, one big, big feature that I love so much while traveling with my daughter is this feature. On, down below here, you have a small screen button icon that you can press. And if you press that, you can remotely control the screen in the back. And I can put something to watch, for example, for my daughter or YouTube or anything while we are driving. I cannot set this up while driving, so I, I cannot get into the Netflix app when I start now, when I drive now, then this will shut down, but it is still online on the back screen, of course. So, so if I, I can it, it put something in while parked and then I can just drive off because that's just a regulation thing. Uh, and I think in the US it will be the same since you also have regulations that you are not allowed to watch something while driving here on the screen. Um, and also I can do all the settings from here um, and that's actually the back screen. If you can see it right here, that's the same settings over here. I hope you see it. I'm going to do put it into wide angle here. Can you see this? Sure can. Okay, perfect. And then you can adjust it up front here as well. And that's a feature that is also very overlooked. I can adjust everything, turn the fans on and everything over here. But um, one thing that's also very important, I can just uh, put in the heating, but that, that's something that I can also control from the normal climate controls over here. And um, what I can also do, I'm going to turn off the, the fans from in the back, um, is this feature. And that's, of course, turning. That's also something you can do from behind, from the back here, is turning over here is driving the seat forward so I can reach over here. And that's a feature that's very cool. And of course, this thing that I control here is also controllable from the screen. That's the mirror of the screen. So everything I do can be controlled from the back as well. 
So that yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's, that's huge. <clears throat> that answers a lot of questions about the rear infotainment. If you yep. need to uh, restart Peppa Pig, uh, yep. that's something uh, you can do without getting out of the car and walking into the back seat to see what you're doing. Oh, oh so, and you don't let Peppa Pig uh, getting uh, or, or disabling for one second. No. <laughs> I can tell you that. No. You don't that, do that. That's as crazy. Well. That's crazy. Quick housekeeping Would... note, a reminder yep. to uh, subscribe to both channels. If you haven't already, smack the like, leave a comment. Uh, there are uh, questions that we're going yes, to be please. answering, but but we welcome more questions. Uh, Day, uh, Anthony wants to know, uh, even if there's a person in that seat, those buttons work? What do you mean? Like, th Yes, the, the screen controls to, to give more or less room. Yeah. You can still control that if someone's sitting there. Yeah, of course. Uh, you can control that from here if anybody sits uh, in the back, no problem. And there, yeah, so everything you do, you can uh, control it both ways. And something that also is to note here, if you can see, that's something that I forgot to mention, is of course you can also game on the, on the back screen. That's something very important. So oh. like again, here, that's the mirroring of the screen. I'm gonna go back into the back soon that you can see that as well, but I wanted to show you here something. And that's the music. Um, now it's set to Netflix, but this could also be, for example, Spotify. And the interesting thing is you can not control Spotify on the whole. You cannot select any tracks here, but you can uh, control the playlist back and forth. So the driver or the ones in the, in the front seat have the control over the, over the Spotify app, for example, or the, or the, um, yeah, or the playlist that it's going to play. But you can um, like switch over next song and something like that. And something else what's pretty awesome from the screen is Guess what? When somebody watches something in the back, you still can listen to music in the front because it's separated. And that's a feature that I really like. Sometimes I, I listen like very widely to some music and there's some Peppa Pig or something like this. It, it kind of works. Of course, I don't do it all the time. Most of the time I listen to Peppa Pig doing stuff um, <laughs> as well while driving. But um, yeah, that's, that's something. So you're to saying keep that even without headphones in the back, It'll separate into two different uh, audio zones. Yeah, with the it speakers. has two audio zones. Yes, wow. and that's something that's also very <laughs> overlooked. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna st still cover the front. So if you have questions for the front, please ask them so now got, because then I've we're got gonna some switch. questions for mm -hmm. the front. Yeah, yeah Andrew please. wants to know how many Bluetooth devices can you connect. I didn't try that, but I'm not sure. Let's see. I, I know on the old one, it's two. But maybe that number has changed in the comments. Can it, anyone it tell could us? Be, it could be because, of course, the, the, they improved the modem hardware here in this car. So this means we have 5G, for example, 5G connectivity. We have dual band Wi-Fi, for example. So I assume that they improved the Bluetooth as well. But I didn't test that. But that's something that I'm going to take with me from this episode. And, um, of course, yeah, to look into um but i think like two devices were no problem my wife also joined so i can assume three but but that's just speculation i have to check um uh, i did yeah. have a question for everybody watching does anybody uh know why the voice activation button didn't work because i mean he's not driving he hasn't unlocked the <laughs> no. car if that's the reason if anyone can answer that i i haven't had that happen to me uh what I've had happen once in a while is if I'm pulling out of my driveway as it's disconnecting from my Wi-Fi, if I try and do a voice command, it goes, mm -hmm. um, I'm not connected to anything. And then I hit it again and it works. But that's only yeah, when I'm pulling out of my driveway. Um, there was, uh, let's see. Oh, a good question I saw. I don't know if I can find it, but there it is. Uh, about, and you are uniquely qualified to answer this. Any yes. comments on how the child seats hook yes. up? Yes, I think that's a good uh, reason to go to the back now, because then I good. can so show you that. you won't disconnect, and if you do, you know <laughs> yeah. what to do. Yeah, I know what to do this time. Uh, one more thing, sorry <laughs> to interrupt again. Uh, here also, when you long press this, there you can enable autopilot over here when you press this button long time. And when you press it to the right or the left, you, you adjust the distance how long the distance would be um, to the front, to the other driver in front. 
So in Germany, we also just have like the autopilot feature is more or less just a lane keeping feature because, um, yeah, it's very limited. But um, I was thinking about getting the uh, the thing anyway to test it out. But uh, I'm gonna start my Patreon before that and try to get some uh, financing <laughs> because that's very expensive, seven thousand euros it costs, but it's still more or less a lane keeping feature because the city driving isn't enabled in Europe right now. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, damn it. One thing I forgot, sorry, that I jump around here. But over here is the lighting. I don't know if that's the same in the Model 3, but these are so cool. These are some touch buttons here that you can just press. And also, when you disable the screen over here and long press those both buttons, then the, the board computer shuts down. Everything else works. You can still drive, you can brake. Um, it even stays into autopilot mode, for example. But when I do that, automatically here the the um, drive uh, neutral and um, re uh, reverse is lit up here. If you can see, there are slight buttons. Can you see them? No. No. Wait a second. I push that one. It's hard to tell, but these are hidden buttons. Um, that were the one in the other Model Three. I think they were here, but now they're on top of here. Yeah. And here's that one, also for the ladies can uh, adjust the mirrors and that's how they move and close up. I don't know if it was like this in the other Model 3. I didn't see that too much. To, yeah, but that's also one feature. All right, let's go to the back, shall we? I'm ready. I'm ready Alrighty. to see it. Any questions still, Brian? You can just hook me up with the guys who asked something. Uh, I will, I will I uh, my take a look. And I have a pretty good idea because now I'm going to just leave the, door open. Let, leave the door open. That's the <laughs> big hack to not to do anything again. So, so we're Andrew gonna wanted to know if the horn is good, but I'm not going to ask you to honk it in the middle of the night. Oh, I'm going to do and, that, of course. <laughs> and uh, Jeff, Jeff pointed out that the horn is back where it belongs. Yes, in the center. You can press that. And of course, you can also change the horn as well uh, also here in europe but you are not allowed to drive with that so i can't do the la cucaracha for example so now you see the car from the outside maybe and i think uh, you kind of see that and i also see my license plate but please don't uh, report and hit and run or something <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah so you so... did get the bigger wheels that is oh, a stealth yeah. long range huh yeah now, that's you've a got stealth. the lfp batteries so you can charge yes. to 100 do you which i'm doing right now and I'm at 99% right now, already, uh, over here. See that? And yeah, so I, that's a tip for everybody who wants to style his Model 3 with, of course, my promo link that I'm going <laughs> to send right after the show. So in but, the U.S., the Model 3 does not uh, give you any reward credits. There oh, no. are no referral credits on the Cybertruck or the Model 3. <laughs> that's sad. Oh, it's sad. Yep, it's sad, but, but you can mm -hmm. still use our... Use our links, and that will get you three months of, at least in the U.S., three months of beta uh, at no oh, charge. That's so cool. you can try it out and see what you think. And uh, in in Europe, I know at least it gets you a high five if you ever meet Jan in person. Yeah, that's true. you got to get a high five when you use my referral code. <laughs> no, okay. It's so, so pretty. Yeah, if you see it, it's very sporty. And many people from Germany said to me, it looks like a Porsche. Yeah, and it kind of does. I know what they mean from the from the sportiness and the tightness of the vehicle. Also, that the lip the lip moved up quite a bit that you can see here, and when you see it from the side, it looks totally sporty. And you still don't get uh, you still have this great visibil visib uh, visibility feature of the Model Three that you can see the street pretty easily. Um, still, you have great visibility still. It, the lip moved up again, and this also incre uh, or, or made the drag coefficient better, the new styling they did. And also the v wheels are also part of the sound dampening. That's very important because the newer wheels have, um, yeah, also, like, I don't know, they, they, the tires or something are more dampened somehow, and mm. it's going to reduce the road noise by 30% as well, or something like this, or 20% it was, I don't know. But it's also very noticeable. So 
yet now you ask yourself, Jan, why are you stupid and took these wheels? I can tell you because it has something to do with styling, of course, because since I did the, I kind of insp got inspired by Optimus, of course, and that's why it's, it's also called Optimus, my car. So it's the civil. That was wheels. actually going to be a question I had. Was oh, was uh, what's the name of your car? <clears throat> yeah, but Optimus is the name of my car. And wait a second, I'm going to have to shield myself from the wind so you don't hear that. So um, the interesting thing about the styling was I went with the silver wheels with the white interior, of course, with the white exterior. But if you order a black Tesla, please please take the stock wheels because the normal wheels give you more range and look stealthy. So if you are going to do a stealth version of this, just go all black. That's the perfect thing. And one thing that people, I don't know if you see that in the pictures or something, but hey, these fog or this, these headlights are actually kind of frosted or something. They look pretty dark or they almost look black as you can see here. And yeah. that's pretty noticeable. And that's very cool styling. And they're still very bright. But yeah, they kind of look look blacked out by the factory already. So it looks already um, sporty. And over here in the rims, you can also see that they have these uh, black plastic covers. And this is also different. And it also here, it is blacked out over here. As you can see, that's so something also that's new. A question in the comments I want to ask real yes. quick, everybody, is tell us the name of your car, because some people yeah, have some please. pretty clever ones. I do see already uh, David's is Serenity. Uh, that's a good choice. And uh, Anthony had a question. Tony wants to know, does the back seat have any physically changed stuff that is clever but minor upgrade, something that may have been overlooked? Yeah, I'm going to check that uh, soon and I'm going to get back to you, but I want to show you something as well in the back. Yes, please. And then I'm going to go in, inside again because it's freezing cool. We have minus three degrees uh, or minus five degrees right now. <laughs> it's free. If I open up the trunk, you can see that the lights actually, of course, go with the trunk. And this is also new. Of course, that the lights aren't here as well. I mean, we've seen that in the review, so I'm not telling you new stuff here, something. But what also increased by, and now hold down to your seat, by uh, I think it was 5 or 4.5% is storage actually increased. So we have a little bit bigger storage. I don't know where exactly in the car, but overall we have 5% increase in storage. Here's all the stuff that I don't want you to see, but here it is. It's um, over there because, of course, in electric cars, we don't have these, yeah, the... the <laughs> Trash bags, hand saw, normal stuff, duct tape, yeah. good, good collection. I don't mind the hat in the plastic bag there. That's just a human no. hat. Um, yeah, and uh, <laughs> so that's, that's, of course, the here the backside of the car. So the styling of the backside, of course, is also new and up, upgraded, and it looks awesome. Also, the new logo is a total game changer. I think it's, a car, it's also a trend in... Um, car design and i love that tesla also jumped onto this trend so overall the car looks super sporty everybody it turns their heads and asks whoa is that a sports car yeah it kind of is but just a sleeper car because i just have the single motor version of course it's just like a no it's like the the opposite of a sleeper car actually so it's a poser yeah. car you could say yeah all right so now i'm gonna some, go into some, the back some names yeah. here uh, we've yep. got uh, Nerd Watchers uh, Model S is Nikki. I cool. assume that's pronounced Nikki. Uh, I'm going to joke and pretend that uh, Tony's is called Shovel, uh, even though he was probably uh, noticing your shovel and uh, also your wooden stakes and silver bullets, is what David pointed out. Smart. Okay. Smart. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so we're in the back seat. What do yep. we got here? So let's see. Let's see. So. So we're Maybe, looking yeah. for something clever, and we're going to talk about the. That's the clever. Way in which the... Is that clever? Is that normal? I don't know. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, it's nice. It's thin. It's elegant. I think that looks good. Yeah, it's cool. You can yeah. do your cups over here because here's not a cup holder. Oh look, I'm gonna charge. I charge my batteries here all the time and for shooting stuff. Oh, because wait a second, John, is that a. 65 watt outlet over here for your macbook yes it is is it really it oh, is yeah you can charge your great. laptop from here 
And that's a cool feature in the back. I would say the infotainment system actually is one of the biggest uh, features they they added here. And uh, I don't know, on, from the sorry that the rattling noise of my jacket, but um, the seats overall, I think, aren't changed too much. I'm not sure, but the Isofix, uh, those those uh, things where you can put in the child uh, thing, the the child seat. Uh, over here is plugged to that because we had a question before about this where does it hook and i try to get the angle here where i can show you i'm going to go over to show you this because this was also a huge thing and over here is the hook as you can oh. see here and it's a hidden hook over here as well so here's a hook that you can put it there and there is also a possibility to mount it in the center but that would need a splitted hook, but that's too complicated for me. I used the single one. So that's how you put in the child seat. Um, yeah, so that's how it looks from the back. Yeah, and yeah. there's no pass through from the trunk, is there? Yes, there is, but not from the center, but over here. Now you can open it up, just put it in the front. I don't know if, no, there's not, not a pass through. As you can see here, it's closed down over here and it's a 60 40 split so you can either have two passengers and a smaller yeah. split or yeah. one pass or one passenger exactly and a larger split exactly because here's not a pass through that would be cool because then you could like scratch your white interior more <laughs> but this one is closed up here over there what are the gray circles at the bottom of the seat those are the indicators where to put the um the the isofix um, points those those fixing points here that you can see here you just shove them in there <laughs> and oh, then it's they letting are... you it's indicating where below yeah. there yeah. is the yeah. fix point yeah and right. i'm not sure if I, I if you could remove them i'm not sure but it doesn't seem that way it seems like they are a fix there by default and fixed yeah uh -huh. So, also um, so Anthony rated. has a very valid concern, which is if the seats yeah. fold down, the vampires can get out of the trunk. Have you? Uh, worried, are you concerned about that? Uh, yeah, they could. Huh. That's the complaint I have to get over to Elon because I have an, of course, on speed dial. Uh, no, so of course. I don't know. Of course. <laughs> of course. So here's the back infotainment system. I'm gonna show you what also increased of course is the screen brightness and we haven't even talked about the smaller bezels of the front screen that you can see already here you see that the smaller it's bezels very, very thin edge to it yep. yes and That's there's great. something i have to complain now and rant a little bit because german car manufacturers put in screens into the cars that have bezels that are thick as this you know what I mean? It's so crazy. Even the Mercedes uh, that people say, oh, it has such a great interior. I don't know, man. It looks old to me when, when, when screens have big bezels. And they keep even the Maybox. They put big bezeled screens inside of the cars. And I hate that. And that's why I love the car so much uh, with the screens well. I can as well. share a theory with you. <clears throat> it's planned obsolescence. They know that next year they can reduce it a little and then a little more. And that'll be oh, an yeah, that... easy way to differentiate between model years and uh, get those million dollar buyers to come back and spend another yeah. million. While the old ones are shakes from Dubai. percent less. Yeah. 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 Those Dubai shakes, of course. And um, yeah, over here you can see the, the brightness of... I mean, this screen is new, but the brightness of the front screen also increased significantly. You can also see that, and that's something I also noticed from testing both, both, um, yeah, both, both things. And here's the infotainment system. Here are the slit. Here are the slits for the ventilation system also, and here are the outlets uh, over there. Here I'm gonna ch I charge my my lights right now with those plugs here. As a video videographer, this is very helpful and handy. And of course, one feature that I already shown from the front is this feature is really this one is a game changer. When my kit kicks too much on the on the back panel, I can just adjust the seat and just drive it forward like this. Right. Without having that's to coordinate pretty neat. with someone in the front seat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so if Andrew somebody sits a... there, he's going to get crushed. <laughs> so Andrew says the rear screen is too small. And while I can agree with that, I think you're space limited. I don't think 
I don't know how to, in a car of that shape and size, put a larger screen without it, uh, without moving parts, without it getting into a position where it could be broken or damaged. Um, so I don't know. Do you think the rear screen is too small? No, I don't think so. Because <laughs> imagine it would be bigger. How would you manage that? I mean, it's, it's, it's already that? covering the whole area here. And of course, I'm pretty tall. That's why the, the seat is right now pretty uh, far behind. That's why I'm sitting in the wrong seat. I should have sit, sit in that, that seat here for my kid. <laughs> but um, yeah. this one goes as well. And but I think it's, it's, lines, it's okay. Tony says, not that I have kids, but man, plugs at kicking level? Maybe all Tesla kids are well behaved. Move those out of foot access. But again, to where? No. I don't know to where. And if you put them on the B pillars that now you've got a concern with uh, them being snagged when you get in or out. My yeah. mother-in-law, uh, we took her out for a birthday dinner and she went ahead and uh, we had something plugged in and she smashed it with her knee. And so the USB cable is broken, but the jack was not because that's the way you design <coughs> USB cables is to be the failure point rather than so strong that the that the jack fails. Uh, but she's a, a, an inconsiderate oaf in the first place, as mm -hmm. is uh, typical. But uh, And I can say that because they don't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So you don't <laughs> leave bad blood in that sense. No. Okay. Yeah, and, and here also you can just start the games, for example, play some games over here, and it's separate from the front, of course. You can just play backgammon. If I knew how to play backgammon, then something would happen on the screen, but I'm an idiot and <laughs> don't know how to play backgammon. And I still have to... Yeah, you can also play Cuphead here. I have to connect a controller soon to test it out, uh, but I'm going to do that as well. But yeah, the, the center screen, I think, is... Uh, totally okay this way of course when you sit here or when you or when people sit here which screen should you use of course the front one is bigger so you're going to watch netflix to the front here you don't need the back screen but for a kid or for like small rides and you just want to enjoy a movie a small movie something to get the time passing i think it's enough and i wouldn't actually like it if it's here the screen i don't like um, rear seat mounted screens. I mean, it's it's higher. It, it makes more sense, more natural the position. But um, I don't know. I, I don't like that too much. So uh, Eric points yeah. out, uh, kids won't complain the screen's too small. They'll be happy just to have a screen. And yeah. that's what I've found in yeah. in cars I've had in the past where we've either added screens or it came with a screen. Uh, they, yeah, they were just happy to have anything at all. Uh, because attention spans That's all have expired. They have yeah, been sadly. Uh, filtered out. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, but um, overall, something also some features in the back that I find very interesting is something like this. This is a small hook where you can hook your um, clothes, for example, while you travel. And this one is pretty strong, actually. You can really hang something very heavy here. Well, you um, have to test it to failure, so go ahead and crank on it until it breaks. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to um, do... Scientific. Absolutely. So we've only got about a minute and a half left. You guys get in your last minute comments because yep. an hour is quite long enough. And I think <laughs> yeah. this tour has uh, discovered new things that we hadn't seen before. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, Jan, uh, if, if you haven't checked out Jan's channel, do that now. Tesla Fix. He gets the biggest names in Teslaverse to speak to him. Uh, in, and some of them even give him valuable information. Then you've got uh, my channel. Only you, Brian. If you haven't checked out my channel, uh, welcome. Uh, I am a sometimes guest on Tesla Fix, and I have a lot of fun. Uh, David says, uh, thank you very nice. Uh, good, good tour. Uh, Tony saying... Uh, uh, though, though, was that a three fresh? Very fresh. Absolutely yeah, it is. true. But uh, I want to say one thing. I want to end this episode with also something bad, actually, because I only talk good things. Oh, your Bluetooth disconnected again. <laughs> so while he's while he's figuring out that he's silent, I will point out that uh, the... There we go. The screen oh. should be in the trunk with the kids. You are back now. We can hear you. Oh, yeah? You can hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So, one thing is uh, f the following function, that maybe it's not just the Tesla Model 3 problem, but a problem overall. If I go into easy entry mode, which I really like, the seat moves lower. 
And if a passenger sits in the back and I press or I just stop the car into park, his feet are going to get crushed because this seat moves back no matter what. So I would devise Tesla to make a firmware update actually to see if those sensors are activated that this seat isn't going down while doing easy entry from the car because I love the setting. Now the seat is very low. And if I press the brake to start the car, the seat moves up. So because I'm charging now, it won't, won't work, but it goes into my driving position. But when somebody is in the back, it will crush his feet. And that's not only a Tesla problem. We've had that in the BMW and the SUVs as well. So this is a problem with the seats, just the mo motors just keep pushing no matter what. But I would advise Tesla to, even if there's a bag in the back, just, just disable easy entry, just disable it. That's the best thing. So that's my advice for the end okay. of the episode. So, so, so yeah. thank you everybody for hanging out with us. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Tony. And uh, thanks to everybody for, you know, uh, spending your time with us and giving us great questions. I apologize. My audio is a little bit low. It's a stream yard issue and I will work on it. Uh, but I've worked on it before without success. So hopefully I can get it sorted uh, because uh, the, the program is great. This is my first time using StreamYard as a host. Hopefully I can get it sorted because I don't want to have to give it up just because of that. So uh, everybody, you know, like, comment, subscribe, do all the usual things. And thanks yep. for hanging out. Jan gets to say his goodbye now. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for watching. And um, please remember, I'm going to upload the review of this car in the next couple of days, maybe Wednesday or Tuesday. Um, I can make it uh, uploaded. It should be up today. But now we have this beautiful live stream, which is also good. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. Please check out Brian's channel. Those five people who watch on my channel, <laughs> go over to my Tesla weekend and subscribe to him. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.